Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Jay Cruz and welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm gonna show you how I create ambient pads only using guitars. Let's get it. Before we get started, you guys know the deal. Please do all of the things that help this channel grow. Like this video, comment and subscribe. Hit the bell notification icon so you get an alert every single time I upload a video. Without further ado, let's get started. So a little bit of back history here. I'm gonna link a video that's very old, but still very informative. It's my take on how I use the Digitech Jamman Solo XT. I'll link the video right up here. I personally load ambient pads into that pedal in all major keys so that I could essentially have ambient pads with me everywhere that I go. But the number one question that I get from that video is how did I create the pads? Even to the point where I recently uploaded, which I'll link right up here as well, an FAQ video where again, someone asked me if I could go over my method of creating ambient pads. I think that it could be somewhat easier to do this if you just, use MIDI controllers or a keyboard of some sort, use the already stock pads that you have access to and maybe add some reverbs and delays and swells and so on and so forth and create pads that way. But personally, I think they sound a little more organic, especially going through a guitar amp like I use it, if it's actually guitars that are creating the pads. The other thing that I think it's important to note in this video is I'm not gonna show you how I create the sounds themselves. The sounds are actually the sounds that I create here on this channel on a weekly basis. So instead, I'm gonna link a playlist right up here, which goes over all of my settings in the HX Stomp. Specifically, I would watch two videos in that playlist. The first video would be how I use delays in the HX Stomp. I use the dual delay and my snapshots within those delays, and also the reverb, which is the glitz reverb. And again, the snapshots that coincide with the glitz reverb. The reason I suggest watching those videos first is because they essentially are the foundational sound of what you're gonna be hearing today. So today, I'm simply going to cover my method in how I go about creating the pads themselves, the end result, so to speak. So the first thing we're going to do is open up a session here. I'm personally using Studio One. Whatever DAW you prefer is fine with me. Um, and I'm going to start off immediately by opening up four tracks. These four tracks will serve as the foundational starting point for how we create these pads. Now keep in mind, I sometimes add or even take away components, but this is my general method and how I approach a song or creating pads in general. For this entire video, I'm going to be working with my Snapshot 3, very, very heavy in ambience, heavy in reverb and delay. I'll give you a quick taste of it. So as you could probably tell, a lot of this process does revolve around my actual sound, which is why I really highly recommend that you watch that series on the HX Stomp that I linked before, because it will give you just a little bit more of an understanding of how to create these sounds before you even get to this point. We're gonna start by laying down the very first track, which is our foundation track. I'm gonna start by playing in the key of G, and we're gonna stay on the lower register of the neck, so basically playing it like a chord. And I will play the chord, but I'm still gonna kind of focus more so on the G and the octave of that versus anything else, because again, I don't want it to get in the way of anything that I may be playing in the future while using this pad. We're gonna move right along to the next portion, which is our octave. The octave essentially is me playing the exact same note, but I'm gonna play it on the higher register of the neck. Again, focusing on mainly just the notes of G versus an entire chord. So very quickly, I'm muting the foundation and we're just gonna hear now me playing the octave. third track, I've labeled it as foundation with effects. What that essentially means is that I will again play the foundational chord, whether on the low register or the high register. Today I'm going to play in a low register, but I'll add some kind of extra little umph to it. Sometimes I'll use chorus, vibrato, but today I'm actually going to use an octave pedal. But you're going to hear a slight difference in how angelic the sound is because that high octave is going to really cut through and cause it to be more of MIDI sounding than actually natural guitar. Hopefully you heard the difference. There's just a slight kind of like 
high-end thing that's happening that I couldn't really get with just a natural guitar. It's that octave that's really making it shine through. And lastly now, we're gonna focus on the high octave. There are two approaches that I take with the high octave. I either literally just play uh, a high octave of the note, so in this case, G, but as high as I possibly can on the neck, or I'll drone it. For me, droning can be compared to like when a drummer is like r doing a, a snare drum roll. Uh, it's the same kind of concept, but with a lot of ambience. And in this particular case, I don't want it to be as staccato -y, if that makes any sense. So today I'm gonna use the drone method, uh, but to compensate for not making it as out there, I want it to be more, a little bit more tucked away. We're gonna stay in my snapshot three, but we're gonna move over to the neck pickup. And then I'm gonna roll my tone knob all the way down. That's gonna now make it a little bit more softer. On top of that, I'm gonna back away. Now typically I would play my note right just almost in between, favoring the neck pickup a little bit in that position, but I'm actually gonna hover over the string and delicately kind of roll, you know, gently roll my guitar pick over and over on the note, but I'm gonna pull away from the neck pickup just to give it a little bit less attack. So let's lay down this high octave drone so you can hear what that sounds like. Now we're gonna put the guitar down because that's pretty much all I'll lay down for now. Sometimes I'll add some stuff, take away some stuff, but for the most part, I think this is a good starting point. So really quickly, I'm just gonna go unmute all of these tracks here. There's this middle point where everything sounds like a pad, working together to create this ambient thing that's happening. So we need to sort of pinpoint where that middle portion is and focus on that alone. So I'm gonna extend my tracks here a little bit by just making everything bigger on the screen. I'm also going to automatically trim off the attack on every single track here. Then what we're gonna do is focus on fading all of this stuff in. So essentially creating a swell. Uh, let's quickly hear what that sounds like. Beautiful. I'm gonna extend it even a little bit more because I wanted to do a kind of more of a, a softer creep in. That's really great. It already sounds really good in my opinion. So now I wanna hear a little bit more of the drone. So I'm gonna single it out and hear what that sounds like. Good, so we're gonna raise that a little bit just to get a little more of that drone. It's a little too tucked away for my taste. Beautiful. Now let's hear what that sounds like with everything together. All right, the other thing I forgot to do was actually kind of trim everything together as well. So we're gonna do that. Trim everything right around here where I see it dramatically starts to fade out. Perfect. That sounds really great to me. So obviously, how do you turn this into a long pad? Well, that's where the trick is, where you have to find the middle and literally just copy and paste and duplicate it. In my particular case, I usually don't run tracks for any more than three to five minutes because I know that I'm gonna be using the Digitech Jamman Solo XT. And there's a feature where it'll automatically loop the track for you. So I don't need the track to be very long because it can just get looped by the pedal itself. But here's another quick trick to make this thing sound even more ambient, more angelic, and also work together better. Because as you could hear, I recorded my effects, and therefore when I stop the track, it just stops dead in its tracks. No pun intended. What we're gonna do is quickly just add effects to the tracks themselves. In this particular case, I'm gonna use the room reverb here that comes automatically in Studio One, and I'm gonna go to the cathedral because it's the most heaviest but i'm gonna lower the mix just a little bit so we're not going too crazy and extend the length a little bit right so just to get a little bit more out of this thing and then i'll just copy and paste that reverb here that we um just put on this track onto all of the tracks so let's hear what that quickly sounds like now that we've added some reverb Beautiful. So even when the tracks actually stop, you could still hear that reverb trail. Um, that's really great. So just by laying down four tracks that I recorded instantly on one take, 
you can create a really, really great and usable ambient pad. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it was more talking and informative, and I know some of you have been asking me not to talk as much lately, but this video was unavoidable. In order for me to essentially teach you this method, I needed to actually speak, right? So I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, let me know in the comment section your method and how you would approach making ambient pads. I wanted to show you how I would do this by just using guitars. I think it sounds just as good, just as ambient, just as pretty and usable. Be sure to do all of the things that help this channel grow. Like this video, comment and subscribe. Hit the bell notification icon so you get an alert every single time I upload a video. Don't forget about the affiliate links in the description box below. You can click on those links and even by checking some of them out, it actually does donate back to the channel a little bit, which is greatly appreciated. There's also a way that you can donate directly to this channel if you choose to do so via PayPal. There's a link for that in the description box below as well. Once again, thank you all for watching and until next time.